Hi, Rachel here for Coping with COVID. Today, I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about a specific mental health disorder that's been getting a fair amount of press lately in light of the semi-recent COVID outbreak. So today, I wanna to talk a little bit about obsessive compulsive disorder, also known as OCD. Now, this is something that is probably more common than some of us might realize. According to the DSM-5, which is the book that we use to diagnose, um, it tells us kind of some treatment protocols and gives us the specific criteria to figure out whether or not we'll diagnose someone with something. Um, according to that, about 1.2% of the 328 million Americans have diagnosable OCD within any given year. So if you want to do the math, that's a lot, a lot of people in our country right now who are challenged with this. The term OCD is something I hear thrown around pretty lightly. So before we begin, I want to make sure that we're on the same page as far as what it actually is. So per the criteria, the American Psychological Association has called it recurrent and persistent thoughts, urges, and images experienced at some time during a disturbance which cause anxiety or distress. So it's that repetition things are happening, thoughts are running through our minds and it causes anxiety. And then the second part of that, the compulsive part, is that we try to ignore or suppress the thoughts by doing a certain action. So it's more than just, I like to have my room look nice, so I'm gonna spend a little time organizing it nicely. It's more to the point of, I feel like if I don't do it, something bad might happen or something's wrong, it's off. So there's that significant, significant anxiety along with it. There are four main types of OCD, there are the four subtypes. So one of them is doubt about accidental harm. So it could be something like people worried that they don't want to hold a newborn baby because, oh my gosh, what if I drop it and it dies? So it's kind of intense. The other subtype is unacceptable thoughts. So for some people, they're stuck with thinking about things that they feel like they should never think about or awful things. Um, what if I walk past this really nice house and I think about lighting that fire? and it's completely unacceptable to me and it causes me a lot of anxiety, but it's nothing I've controlled. Another one is the symmetry counting. So this is the one we see a lot with turning the light switch on and off five or six times before we leave a room. Um, maybe be fixing a picture because I don't want it to be crooked. Things like that. Now the subtype that we hear a lot about now and the one that likely people um, with this type of OCD are most affected by is contamination OCD. So this is going to be friends or family members who have worries that they're going to get ill. This is a really, really, really tricky one right now because certainly we have a lot more press on washing our hands more often and food being recalled and thinking about things that can get us sick. So before people who have contamination OCD were being told that they were overreacting and you need to not do this so much and it'll be fine. Well, now things are really, really tricky and up in the air because we're finding more and more that we really need to be taking a lot more precautions and we need to be washing our hands more often. And there's going to be a lot of the behaviors that they were probably treated for that we're now going to see become necessary again. So it's a really, really challenging balancing act. So what I want to do today is I want to give a little bit of hopefully some insight and guidance for how to stay balanced if you were a loved one have OCD, especially whether it's contamination or the other types, how to stay balanced and make it through this without going overboard. Fortunately, there are lots of resources that are available for this specifically. There are some really good articles and websites that you can go to. I will give a list at the bottom today too for you to reference. Um, and just a couple of really practical guidelines that I kind of found poking around too is still setting those limits for yourself. So one of the first recommendations that you'll see in a lot of places is to make sure that you look at and follow the guidelines, but no more. So if it is washing your hands for 20 seconds before and after you eat, or after you come back from the store, things like that, it would be only allowing yourself to wash for about 20 seconds and not washing for 20 seconds. And then maybe you wash them again because you touch the faucet. So really that mindfulness of I'm only going to stick to the limits and I'm going to try to be very, very mindful of not going overboard. One of the ways that that would be treated was by exposure and response prevention. And for some of you out there, if you were doing this type of therapy that involves going hands-on and facing your fears, 
you might find that you're not able to do that right now for safety concerns. So it isn't going to be surprising if you had been doing this and then your therapist are asking you not to do that right now. So it's going to be really important to make that plan for yourself. Um, another thing that you can do is talk to other people in your life. If you're not quite sure if you're going overboard or not, it's really good to bounce it off another person. So whether it's a family member or friend, a therapist is always a good person to bounce it off of and get that outside feedback for is this excessive or not. Because at this day and age, with some of the recommendations going on, it can be kind of tricky to figure out where that line is. So another kind of concrete example of a way to try to keep this in check too is to limit your exposure to the media. So one recommendation that I found um, that might come across as a little excessive, um, the International OCD Foundation recommends no more than five minutes of exposure to media a day. So you can break it up for two and a half minutes in the morning, two and a half minutes in the afternoon, and some of you might be anxious just hearing this. And the thought is it really doesn't take that long to look at some of the headlines and kind of get a general idea for what's going on. Setting that limit, setting a timer so physically it goes off, you know when your time is up, will help you to keep some of that in check too. Um, and then you, you don't have the chance to maybe accidentally go overboard and start to read into things too much. Another thing that's going to be really important for everyone is sleep schedule. It's really easy to get off schedule, especially if your work schedule has changed a little bit or you're off of work. You might find yourself staying up later, sleeping later, or it could be the opposite of getting up really early. The more that you stay in a schedule, the more that you stay in routine, the more your body stays regulated, the more the stress levels, anxiety, everything is going to stay down a little bit. So just something as simple as sleep hygiene. If you were exercising before, or maybe you want to start exercising, that's a great way to help our bodies relax a little bit too. So trying to get some sort of regular exercise routine. This is something too that we want to try to make sure it doesn't go to excess. So about three days a week, four days a week, probably would be good, even if it's a 10 or 15 minute walk. Something to blow off that steam a little bit. Connecting with other people too. So again, that's gonna give you the opportunity to bounce off some ideas with other people. It's also gonna give you a chance to have that connection because that's really what we need to and sometimes just having especially if it's a calm person around having that calm person around can help us stay a little calmer can help us think a little more clearly too if you're already in therapy taking medita medications that is wonderful if you haven't been doing it for a while it might be a good idea to get back in touch with either your old therapist or perhaps start with a new one so even if you have a treatment plan that's been working really, really well, you might find that it might need to be tweaked, or maybe you might wanna go and just make an appointment and just touch base and see, is it still working for you the way it used to? Because certainly we might need to make a little bit of changes right now. And if you've never done medications for it, again, that could be very, very helpful. So that would be something, if you've never been on them, you would make an appointment with probably a psychiatrist, um, more likely than a general practitioner and they can just assess and figure out what might be best for your specific body um, to try to help too. That can help a lot to take away some of that edge of those urges or those compulsions. One thing to keep in mind too, especially if you're worried about going out in public right now, is insurance companies during the pandemic have gotten rid of their, their, um, some of the requirements for telemedicine. So now every insurance company covers virtual visits. So if you're too worried about going out in public, you can still get your therapy. It shouldn't matter what kind of insurance you have. You can still call, make an appointment, and you can still see somebody over your computer or phone. Or sometimes it's even over the telephone. So it's easier now than ever to reach out and get that little bit of connection, that little bit of peace of mind. Because really, truly doing some of those things can help a lot. One resource that I really want to highlight today, too, outside of just on the therapy and medications is the International OCD Foundation. I have listed them under the um, under the links underneath for the International OCD Foundation. They do have weekly online support groups. So if you or somebody you love is really having a challenge with OCD right now, you can go on, you can talk to people, you can connect. And there's always professionals involved in that too. So that's a service that you can connect with. I also have included their email address if you have questions, they have a phone number, so it's a really good resource and there's a lot of good other links on that page too, just for you yourself to look at to see. So I'd strongly encourage 
some of that, giving yourself a little bit of time on the internet, and maybe not too much, but trying to look and notice those resources because there's a lot out there. So as always, I hope this is helpful. If you or somebody you love is still struggling, feel free to give us a call. We're available as much as we can be, um, and hopefully you're able to kind of keep yourself out of that black and white thinking and stay balanced too. Feel free to comment below and let us know if there's anything else that you want to learn more about. Take care.